NFL fans how we feeling right now. We just got to see CJ Stroud and we got to see Justin Fields. This wasn't like a typical preseason first quarter. We got to see the big dogs. We're talking about D'Amico Ryans, some of his best guys being out there. We saw Daniel Hunter out there. We saw Stephon Diggs out there. Tank Dell had a touchdown. Justin Fields, he was on the football field. and had kind of a shaky start, but I think he settled in nice, and we got to talk about it all. And you know what that means? We got a hot topic. So I want to open this up and kind of talk about this in two sections as we look at the first quarter of this football game. It was five combined drives. C.J. Stroud had two drives on the football field. Justin Fields had three. They didn't get any points. C.J. Stroud, Tank Dell, they connected on a touchdown. But I want to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers first. I want to kind of clear some things up because I was watching this game closely. I want to see what did Justin Fields look like. Now understand, everything we're going to talk about in this video, take it with a grain of salt. It matters. But it's not do or die. It's still the preseason. And yes, I understand that. But talking about Justin Fields, I think the biggest thing that we're going to look at, he took two sacks. Now, he went five of six, had 67 passing yards, but he took two sacks and had two fumbles. Talking about those fumbles, what was going on with him and Nick Herbig? Why couldn't they connect under the center? Why couldn't they snap the football and get it in his hands? I think that's something that we have to actually look at Justin Fields for one. Because that's the communication. We have to understand. We ran this in practice. When I get under the center, we have to snap the football like this. We have to understand what's going on. And if I'm the center, I got to make sure the football is in my quarterback's hands before I try to get to my blocking assignment. Now, of course, it's moving at 1,000 miles per hour. But still, this is something we're going to have to clean up. You saw Mike Tomlin on the sideline. He's furious because this is something you can't have. It's sloppy. But it is the preseason, and it's the first preseason game. Now, if we go back into practice, we continue to do this. We go into the next preseason game versus the Bills. Continue to do this. I think that's something you talk about. But still, Justin Fields and Nick Herbick have to be on the same page. I think when you look at blame, you try to assess it to anyone, you got to assess it to both of those guys. Like I said, Justin Fields, have it to understand, we got to haul this football in. Even if we don't connect with the snap, fall on the football. Let's not try to pick it up. Let's not try to do anything fancy. Let's not let the defense get their hands on the football. If we miscommunicate on this snap, I'm getting down on it. We're going to live to see another down. They almost fumbled away that second one that they fumbled. So that's just what we look at. And like I said, Nick Herbick have to get on the football. Can't let it get away because those are costly turnovers that can really cost you to get into the regular season looking like that. And then actually, they brought in Zach Frazier, the rookie center out of West Virginia. So just giving him some snaps there. He didn't have any snap fumbles, and I think he's going to be a good guy. He's a young guy coming into this line. So you think about him, Troy Fatani, what we saw with this offensive line unit. You saw Broderick Jones out there as well. I think really looking at Troy Fatani, the pass rush rep against Daniel Hunter, and this is another thing I want to talk about because we're going to talk about Justin Fields and taking sacks. Now, I think early on in the game, he was comfortable. They got him an early screen to Najee Harris. They got him a boot. He scrambled out to the sideline. They got him another pass. He had a quick hitter to George Pickens on the sideline. And I think just looking at that body of work, he looked decisive. Now, when we think about Justin Fields, we think about a guy who holds on to the football, and you're going to look at the sack numbers, you're going to look at the fumble numbers, the same old Justin Fields. But like I said, I watched this guy closely in this football game. He looked more decisive, like he was comfortable. We're going to have to work on the exchange of the the under-the-center snap. But other than that, I think he was really comfortable. Now, talking about the Troy Fatanu pass rush rep against the Neil Hunter. Now, Troy Fatanu, understanding what you are coming out of Washington, you're a first-round pick. I think you're going to be a very great offensive lineman. That's a a dog that you're going against when you talk about the Neil Hunter. And it was a third-down pass rush rep. You look at that. They're going man coverage across the board. D'Amico Ryans, he's saying, okay, can your offensive line hold up? Because I like my corners. We got dogs in the back end. And I don't think you have a rock combination to get open quick enough. And Justin Fields, he looked for the quick game. Didn't see anything he liked. He tried to pull it down. That's when Daniel Hunter was there. So now we're saying, look at Justin Fields. He's taking another sack. And I think it's looking at... We see the DBs. We see the route combination we got. We don't have anything. We try to pull the football down. We try to scramble and get out, but we just can't because the Neil Hunter is the Neil Hunter for a reason. They paid him for a reason. So I'm looking at that. I think overall, though, 
looking at what D'Amico Ryan's defense did, I think those guys were getting after, and we know what that defense is going to be like this season. They got some big time additions. So the pass rush, they were still stunting, bringing the different types of loops and combinations like they always do in a defensive line. And just looking at the run game for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Najee Harris really couldn't get going. Looking at what he had on the ground, he had three carries, nine yards. I think Jalen Warren had a big time run. He had three carries, 11 yards, but his, his longest run was a nine yard run. So you had a big time run by him, nine yards. Then Najee, he came in with a six yard run. That was his longest run. But outside of that, we got to talk about CJ Stroud. It's another hot topic because looking at what this unit is and what they're going to be this season, boy, oh boy. If you thought we talked about CJ Stroud last season, just wait for what we're going to talk about this season. He looked decisive. He was getting the football out quick. And I think another guy that we're going to have to talk about after we get off of the offense and talk about Pittsburgh's defense, Peyton Wilson. He was getting after it. Joy Porter Jr. was out there. But you saw Tank Dell. He had the touchdown. They got him on a post route. The corner and the safety. Got to communicate that better. I think the safety didn't give his, I think the corner didn't give his safety enough help. So he left him really, he left him out to dry over the top. But Tank Dell came in with the post. It's an easy touchdown. But other than that, though, you look at the run game for the Houston Texans. They couldn't really get anything going. Damian Pierce had four carries for four yards. Then the other backs, they came in after the first unit got out. So just looking at that, I think overall the passing game still looks crisp. You had a pass that C.J. Stroud tried to get to Dalton Schultz on the sideline. He tried to get a pass interference call. The refs weren't having none of it. It was good coverage on the back end from what I saw. But just overall, I think. That first drive, we're looking at the pass rush getting home. Th thinking about what those guys are for the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think that defense was flying around. Now, you know guys like Cam Hayward, TJ Watt, they're not going to be out there. But you still look at some guys in the back end, like Joey Porter Jr. You look at the second level, you see Peyton Wilson, you see DeMarvin Leal, you see um, Keanu Benton, those types of guys being out there. They were flying around. This is going to be another good defense, and I think I can say the same for Houston. But the last guy I want to talk about, Peyton Wilson. He... If you didn't see the video where I talked about Peyton Wilson, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., Edgerin Cooper, and Junior Colson, I talked about all of those guys in one video. If you didn't see that video, you're going to want to check that out. Peyton Wilson is a guy who flies around, and when he gets into the scramble drill, he's chasing after these quarterbacks, or he's the spy, and he has to hunt down a quarterback. If he gets into a hook to curl, and he has a guy that he has to, he has to get to his landmark. If he's in man coverage, he has to run with somebody. He unlocks that 4-4-3 speed. It's not just a guy who ran the 40 and you didn't see it on film. I saw that same guy running just like that when he was playing at NC State. So these are the types of things that I talk about when I talk about a guy just unlocking his athleticism, being the type of guy that he is, I think he's going to be a very good football player. Last thing I want to touch on, actually, Nate Wiggins. Nate Wiggins, we're going, I'm coming with the All-22 for that one. Nate Wiggins against the Philadelphia Eagles, he, he played a couple series. Now, it's not Devontae Smith, it's not A.J. Brown out there, but he's still showing you. That's another guy coming out of Clemson. Now, we talked about was his size going to be a deterrent from teams drafting him, and he fell a little bit in the first round. The Baltimore Ravens, what do they always do? They pick you up just when the NFL thought that maybe you weren't the best prospect. Tyler Linderbaum, Kyle Hamilton, Nate Wiggins might just be next in line. We're going to talk about that all. We're going to come back with the film. Drop down below in the comments. What players have you seen thus far? We got some more preseason football tomorrow, but what players or teams have you seen thus far that film you want me to break down and that's the last thing we're going to touch on for the day. I'm going to leave you with that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on the video. That's going to do it for today. And now...